Hi friends, I am here for our next reading. You see Sammy's ears here. Oh my goodness, we're getting all, oh, there's Tilly. <laughs> and she's laying down. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump right into Because of Mr. Tourette. And we have finished chapters one through seven, so we're jumping in right away today with chapter eight. Hi Sam. And chapter eight begins with a whole new month. So we are now in the month of October. And we're going to begin with a perspective from Peter. I never had something in school exciting before, but the plant unit we did with Mr. T had me fired up. We grew these bean plants from seeds and once they got big enough, we started doing different tests with them. Variables, Mr. T called them. First, we stuffed the plants in boxes with just a tiny hole on the side, and we waited to see what the plants would do after a few days in the dark. Anna had a meltdown about it. I don't want to put mine in a box, she cried. Mr. T had to take her out into the hallway to calm her down. I was kind of shocked. Usually, she doesn't say anything. What a weirdo, I thought. It's no wonder she doesn't have any friends. It's a good thing Danielle was her partner. She's the patient kind. Anyone else would have been fuming. My partner was Lexi, which was fine. She let me do what I wanted. Next, we put the plants on the side to see how they would grow. I couldn't believe it. The plants bent and still grew up towards the ceiling. That was pretty cool. But the best part was what we got to do in the end. Mr. T let us feed our plant any concoction we wanted to over the course of a week. There was just one rule. We couldn't use an ingredient that would spoil and stink up the classroom, like milk, or something that wasn't good for us to breathe, like gas. There were some pretty wild concoctions. David and Nick used salad dressing because according to them, plants make salad, so the plant will like salad dressing. Brenda and Heather used orange juice mixed with ketchup and Pepto-Bismol. I don't know what they were thinking. Mine was the best, though. I brought in cat litter, used, soda, and a little maple syrup. I did my best to mix it together and feed it to my plant. Lexi wasn't real happy about my choice of ingredients. I didn't tell her that I had peed in the soda bottle some, too. Peter, you moron, this stuff's gonna kill our plant, she whined. Shut up, you never cared about this plant before, I said. Well, I like care now, Lexi said. Lexi, maple syrup comes from trees. I drink a soda and I'm growing and farmers put animal manure on their fields all the time. So zip it, it's going to work. Our plant was dead in two days. Danielle and Anna did the best. Danielle used some natural ingredients her grandmother had taught her about. Something the old time farmers really did use, I guess. Danielle lives on farms, so she had a big advantage. Her concoction worked big time. She and Anna were the only ones to come up with the food that the plants actually liked. Anna was all smiles until Lexi said, like, you're just lucky Danielle was your partner. She liked did everything. Then Lexi turned to me and added, even if she is fat. I don't think anyone else heard, but I laughed. I know I probably shouldn't have. Anna's smile disappeared and she stared at the floor. Poor old Luke sure tried. I think he just had too much brain power in it. And he's got a lot of brain power. He's been the smartest kid in school since kindergarten. His partner was Jeffrey, but he never does anything. He just let Luke take charge. Maybe he should have helped. I brought in a number of different ingredients, Luke said, and they'll interact perfectly because of the electron balance and resulting a bond formation. He even said something about the periodic table or something crazy. Well, you're never going to believe this, but Luke mixed his junk together and it started smoking. The next thing we knew, the stupid fire alarm was going off. The whole school had to go outside and even the fire department showed up. It was great. Mr. T had some explaining to do. And after a while, we were let back inside, but Luke wasn't performing any more experiments for us. Man, 
Things were just so much fun with Mr. T. Chapter eight or chapter nine, Luke. We moved from cool math right into wicked science. The only thing I didn't like about our science unit was that we had to have partners. I prefer to do my projects alone, but Mr. Terrupt teamed us up. We were working with plants and he said we didn't have enough space for everyone to have their own. Jeffrey was my partner, which, believe it or not, worked out great because he let me do whatever I wanted. He didn't care. The only bad part was that he was always grumpy. Dollar word. We studied photosynthesis by observing how our plants grew toward the light, and we stuffed it in a box that only had a tiny hole on the side. Then we studied geotropism by observing how our plants grew towards the ceiling, even after we tipped the plant on its side for a few days. And then we were given the opportunity to study a variable on our own. Mr. Trupp told us to manipulate the plant's nourishments. Feed it whatever you want, he said. Make your own concoctions. Jeffrey left me alone. He hated school and everything about it. That day, I hurried home and studied my periodic table. I'd received a special chemistry set last Christmas. Hydrogen and oxygen makes a special bond and they come together to form water. So I figured I should try to recreate that special bond with whatever molecular, dollar word, ingredients that I chose. I looked through the chemicals in my set and picked the ones that would result in the same type of electron balance that occurred in the hydrogen and oxygen bond. I took my ingredients to school and got ready to measure and mix. Jeffrey was slightly interested at this point. Mr. Trepp, on the other hand, appeared a little uneasy about the whole thing, but he never stopped me. Luke, sometimes when you mix chemicals, it can cause a reaction which then explodes. Dollar word. I know, I said. Maybe we shouldn't mix those in the classroom without knowing what's going to happen, he said. It might not be safe. All these potions came from my chemistry set at home. My mom saw it. It's safe, I said, trying my best to convince Mr. Trupt. I didn't tell mom or Mr. Trupt about the few ingredients I got from dad's garage. I knew it would work. Hey guys, come and look at the stuff Luke's mixing together, Chris yelled. I felt everyone gather behind me as I began mixing my substances together in a bowl. Mm -hmm. But before I could feed my plants, something happened. Come here, Sadie, come here. Good girl. First, the bowl started feeling warmer and then hot. The potion turned dark green, then gray, and then it started bubbling. First slowly and then rapidly. Ooh. I knew it was bad. Back up, everybody, back up. Get away from it, get away, Mr. Trout ordered. Smoke started billowing from my concoction. Then the screech of the fire alarm pounded against my ears. The only other thing I heard was Peter laughing. This is awesome, he yelled. Way to go, Luke, sir. Outside, everybody, outside, Mr. Trout ordered. I was done for. I was sure of it. Wrong again. Mr. Trump spoke to Mrs. Williams and took the blame for everything. He even stood up to the fire marshals who always walked through the building after an unannounced fire alarm. The marshal wanted our dollar word posters taken off the hallway walls. He claimed, here baby, come here. He claimed they were a fire hazard. Jeffrey thought this confrontation was a big deal. Did you see Mr. Terrupt say no to that guy, he said? He refused to take our posters down. I saw, I said. And I saw flashbacks of smoke pouring out of the bowl. I knew I wasn't ever going to be a botanist. Dollar word. At least Jeffrey had gotten excited about something. I wish Mr. Terrupt hadn't trusted me so much. Maybe it was because he was a first year teacher and didn't know better. But I don't think that was it. I think it was a case of Mr. Terrupt being a special teacher. Chapter 10. Jeffrey. There we go. Luke was trying to feed our plant. I saw the smoke rising. I knew what was going to happen. Trump did too, because I saw him go to the windows right away. Not fast enough, though. 
The alarm still went off. The whole school had to go outside because of Luke. When we came back in, some guy was walking down the halls with our janitor, Mr. Lumas and Mr. Ruddy. Drep sent us into the classroom, but he stayed in the hall. I hid by the door to listen. All of it, the man yelled. I want all of it off these walls. He was pointing at our math posters. Mr. Loomis looked at Tarrupt. You heard him, he said. I'm not taking them down, Tarrupt said. Do you know who this is? Mr. Ruddy said. This is the fire marshal. Tarrupt said, I don't care who it is. I'm not taking it down. He looked at the fire marshal and said, you have no idea how hard my kids worked on these. He was pointing at our posters. He was pointing at my poster. Come on, Vera. You're okay. He was pointing at my poster. It had one word on it, stupid. And it wasn't even a dollar word. All of a sudden, I felt bad because I hadn't really tried on Tarup's project. There were some more words said, but then the fire marshal left. The poster sta stayed. I hope he felt stupid. Tarup came back into the room. Peter was out of his seat. Mr. T, you just told that guy off, Peter said, dancing around. That was awesome. No, I didn't, Trump said. Get to your seat. You should have seen that. Come here, Sammy. Come here. Sammy, come here. Come here. We've got some cranky girls. But I saw it, and I heard it. I saw it and I heard it. Trump stuck up for this. There's always posters in the school halls and they're never fire hazards. I think the fire marshal was just mad about our false alarm. And I think Trump knew it too. He was gonna get pushed, he wasn't gonna get pushed around. Our hard work mattered to Trump, even mine. I owed him now. I had to try, even if only a little. All right, my friends, we just finished chapters 8, 9, and 10. We're going to jump back in later on this afternoon and because of Mr. Trupt, and we'll jump in with our next chapter, Anna. It's a beautiful morning. Go ahead and enjoy this day. Read a book. Do something fun. And I'll check in with you guys later. Love you all. Bye.